Hi, welcome back to my High Plains life. This is episode 31. It is September 7th, 2017, and I am your hostess, Danielle. It's been about two weeks since the last recording, so I am back on a regular schedule, hopefully, and I have lots to show you today. Some of it you've already seen, but it was finished, finished last time, but now it's finished, 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 blocked, and pictures taken, which I will include, and so I'm just really glad with some of the progress that I've made over the last few weeks. So let's jump right in. As far as on the needles, I told you about my FOs previously. I have my On the Spice Market by Melanie Berg with yarn from Dragon Fairy Dye Works. And I had this finished last time. It had been finished for a while. But I finally gave it a good soak and blocked it. I just did a soft block because um, I like the squishiness of garter stitch. So there's, you know, some of it's garter, some of it's this lace e section. Um, I like the squishiness of garter stitch and so I didn't want to stretch it out too much. I like to keep that there. So I don't know how well you can see this, but isn't that color beautiful? I love that blue, the green. Um, so this is my On the Spice Market and I will include uh, finished photos, hopefully here. I also finished blocking my etched Rio wrap. Oh, and I was gonna say I love the cash silk for that, but I really love this yarn. It's Dragon Fairy Dye Works Silvara Fingering. Um, it was a joy to work with. It's a joy to wear. Post blocking, it only softened up further. Um, I'd really like to work with this again. And it's affordable. That's the thing. Like, yes, the handmade in cash silk is absolutely luscious. Not so affordable. <laughs> That's a splurge. Um, but this is affordable. And again, it just softened up even further after blocking. I can't stop squishing it. So, A plus on all the yarn fiber choices that I've made recently. Um, as I said, my etched Rhea wrap is finished, 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 blocked and pictures taken, and updated on my Ravelry Projects page. Um, Um, that's by Sarah Smolent, and I have to say, my local yarn store, it's called You and Me, a yarn boutique with E-W-E, you and me. Um, they are great at sucking me in. Uh, and I know it's a, you know, it's a business tactic. It's great, though. Um, and they're always so friendly about it. And that's why people knit samples. Both this shawl and the etched Rio wrap were samples that they had made and done up in the shop. Saw them, fell absolutely in love with them, even stole the colorway for this, and close to the colorway for my etched Rio wrap. Um, very, very smart of them. And they know they can suck me in with that. All they have to do is knit up a sample, stick it in the shop, have, tell me to try it on, and I'm a goner. Next thing you know, I'm buying yarn for it. <laughs> you know who you are, Weldon. 
All I'm saying. Um, in addition, I have my transverse cardigan by Ann Weaver out of Cascade Echo Plus. And that is getting a good soak right now, actually. Um, because I ran out of blocking boards. <laughs> so I will have that blocked and pictures taken by the end of the day. Um, hopefully it dries fast. Um, I'm looking forward to putting buttons on it. Now for my whips. This is kind of a big project. It's the Celestarium by Audrey Nichols. I'm using Spruce Mountain yarn in the Twinkle in Midnight Blue 2 colorway. And as stated last time, I am owning my geekiness and using a different colored bead based upon the different magnitudes for the stars. I started this before the eclipse. I had fun knitting through it. And I am 33.66% geek with spreadsheets complete. Um, I'm sorry my glasses are giving so much glare today. I take them off, but then I have trouble reading my show notes. Um, yeah. So, Celestarium. This is still my first skein of yarn. I'm a third of the way through, and I still have half of my first skein of yarn. So I'm kind of concerned because I have three skeins, and I hope I didn't overbuy. And I hope it's not smaller than what it's supposed to, because I didn't really check gauge. It's a shawl. Who checks gauge for a shawl? Um, and I don't want it to be smaller than the other projects than what the other projects look like their finished sizes i really like them so i kept the yarn overs with the knit two together for where the stars are located i have just finished the increase round for chart f okay so i finished charts a b c d and e it didn't really get confusing until charts E because there was one chart A, one chart B, one chart C, two charts D, four charts E. So it broke the pie shawl up into quarters and that started to get, it wasn't confusing, it was just more pages to shuffle and really had to make sure I was in the right place. Then I did my increase round and I've just finished that. So I have all my stitch markers marking every eighth of the way around. And next I start chart F, which has eight sections. Again, just more pages to shuffle. It's not really difficult, except for there's no rhythm you can get into because it's not a regular lace pattern. It's really just stuck in it, round and round, with a yarn over and a two together everywhere there's a star. And then in the next row above it, you place the bead. Um, not hard, not confusing, just you have to read every row in the chart because where the stars are is different every, every time. So, let's see, I'm like, can you see, can you see? There's my North Star Polaris. And you can see my orange red stars. I have some green and blue, like there's a blue. Ah, there's some green. 
but they don't stand out as much against the blue yarn for two reasons. One, they're more clear versus opaque like the other beads. Um, but they were the closest I could find in the shade of the color that I wanted. Like I could find a lime green in a solid opaque bead, but I didn't want a lime green. I wanted, oh, this is hard. It's backwards. Um, a darker green color, like a true green. So I'm glad I'm adding the yarn overs because then the star placement will be obvious. Um, and so far it just looks like a squished up little bundle. Um, but trust me, there's a shawl in here somewhere. Sorry, I need to edit some of this. It was, I'm jabbering on. Um, so that is my Celestarium shawl. I have this in my bag by Frog Off Studios that is sewn locally here in Colorado Springs. So that is what I've been working on since uh, the 20th, about of August 20th, uh, just before the eclipse. So that has been that and my prayer shawl have been my main projects. Um, again, this is for the partial ministry at my church. I was having questions as to what yarn to use last time because I'd ran out. And ah, what I did was I used sock yarn. Ah, leftover sock yarn in a purple variegated. And when that ran out, my shawl was still a little too, sh too small. Um, and now that I have enough yarn to work with, I'm just going to knit, knit, knit. So I looked for something else that would work with it. I think this looks good. Mm, it's not washed out. It's a little darker. Mm, that's more true. It's a darker purple. It's a Donegal tweed that my parents actually brought back from Ireland for me. And that's how it comes on a cone. I have no idea the yardage. I can't estimate per using wraps per inch in weight because I don't know how much the cone weighs. Uh, so I can't, I couldn't really use it for a sweater or anything. And it's a very sheepy wool. Um, it's rough. I don't, it's not merino. Um, like the wool itself is rough before you even get to the tweed nups, but it's very pretty. Uh, it's a little lighter than it's showing it. It's a, a definitely a purple, but it has pink and blue and green um, and bright purple nups in it. If you can see the tweed, it's very, very cool. So I've just been knitting away off the cone and this is how big my shawl is now. Mm, you can't really tell. Sorry. And I'm just going to keep knitting until I feel good about it. So I have the yarn. <laughs> Why not, right? Oh, and this just is in a yarn along the Rockies tote. From 2015, and this is easy to just haul around everywhere with me, and it's big enough to hold the cone of yarn. So, those are what I have been working on until today, because today is September 7th. It's the start of the football season! Woo! -hoo! Regular season, the first game is tonight. I 
personally enjoy preseason football for several reasons. One, I like football. It's been months since last game. I enjoy getting back into the football season. I love seeing uh, some of the new players coming up, drafted, undrafted. Um, I love watching Hard Knocks. This year they're following the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and seeing some new faces, new names, watching the preseason games, seeing how they play, you know, if they can make any big big moves. Um, I enjoy it. But what I really love is regular season football. The big boys come out to play. I have always loved the Broncos. And then I fell in love with J.J. Watt several years ago and started following the Houston Texans. And then my husband dragged me into fantasy football and I started watching a whole bunch of players. Um, and so now I just love watching football. I am not a football widow. If anything, I watch as much or more football than my husband does. Although he always seems to know all the stats and players better than I do. So go figure. Um, sorry, all that to say, uh, the Down Cellar Studio Pigskin Party 2017 starts today. Yay! Um, it's a knit along sponsored by Boston Jen of the Down Cellar Studio podcast. If you don't listen to her, I suggest you give her um, a try. She is very personable. She does a good combination of telling about her life and family and then combining that with her knitting and crafting pursuits. And I enjoy listening to her. So every year, I think this is the third or fourth season, she hosts a pigskin party knit along. It runs the entire regular season from today until February 5th, 2018, uh, the day of the Super Bowl. And you earn points based upon yardage of projects. There are interception games run throughout the season, special Monday night football opportunities to earn extra points. Um, and then based upon how many points you have is how many chances into the raffle you get. There are sponsors and tons of prizes for it. So um, it's always a good time. I recommend you go over to the Down Cellar Studio podcast group on Ravelry. Check it out. Read the rules. If you're interested, knit along with us. You can still join. So I am casting on two projects today. They are both Hohi Locatelli designs because I am also doing the Hohi Fall Knit Along 2017. That started September 1st. I'm sorry it is too late to register for it if you haven't done that already. I have been sitting on my hands trying not to cast on um, either one of these projects for the last week because I wanted to wait till today so they would count for the Pigskin Party Cow also. So they are my Lemongrass and my Ley Lines Shawl. So the Ley Lines Shawl I'm doing out of this mini mochi. It's a pretty variegated colorway. Um, I have a thousand yards. Hopefully it'll be enough to finish up the Leyline shawl. I'm just going to get that cast on today just to get it started and then proceed immediately to my other project. Lemongrass Pullover. Love it. I... Ah! 
<laughs> have swatched for it. I did swatches in the nine, ten, and ten and a half US sizes and blocked and measured. And the ten and a half needle gives me 14 stitches per four inches and the gauge it calls for is 13. So I am a quarter of a stitch an inch off. I like the fabric. I don't want to go up any further needle-wise because I know it's supposed to be an open drapey fabric, but I think that's enough. And it's also 70% merino, 30% alpaca. Alpaca is going to stretch when it's finished and the weight will pull it down. So I don't want to be any looser. So there's my swatch. All my yarns are caked up. Yay! I got my stitch markers. I got, whoops, I got my rubber ducky tape measure to measure my progress. I thought I had my needle in here. already and I have my size ten and a half needle this was one of my recent acquisitions a little splurge to myself it is it is not likey it is licky I think is the correct pronunciation making the rounds um, this is a size ten and a half US 6.5 millimeter I love them I knitted knit the swatch on this um, and loved it. I normally don't like wood, but this has a coating on it that seals it, that makes it nice and smooth. The join is great, and it works with my uh, carbons, knit picks, carbons, cords. So, love it. So everything is ready. I have my pattern. And with my gauge being slightly off, I had to do the maths. So if I knit the largest size, that was a 58 inch bust circumference. It's supposed to have at least eight inches of positive ease. That's a lot. <laughs> um, so I figure at my gauge, with one stitch off every four inches, um, that I would be about four, four and a half inches smaller in circumference than the size I knit if I knit the largest. So being 53, 54 inch bust circumference still gives me plenty of positive ease. Um, and hopefully I don't run out of yarn. And I think I will just knit the number of stitches called for for the largest size um and that should work it's a paid for pattern so i won't show you the details but that's the lemongrass pullover love it so i am all ready to go in my bag i'm gonna cast this on today and i don't know how far i'm gonna get because i am still having a lot of fun working on my celestarium so depending upon what is easier to knit on during the football game tonight, it's probably what I'll be working on. So those two items would all be casting on later today. Oh, and this is, this is not suitable for children. Ah, this is the mug I got and talked about last time. Love it. What am I stocking? All the beautiful projects people are doing for the DCS Pigskin Party and the Hohe Fall Cal 2017. Going in and looking at those chat threads, oh my god, 
people are doing so many beautiful projects. I added a lot <laughs> to my favorites and my queue. And let's just say my queue took a beating. <laughs> um, beautiful, beautiful projects. So several of the Hohi Locatelli patterns that I did not purchase on sale this year. I think I'm going to wait for next year's Fall Cal and hope she offers 20% off our patterns again and I will wait and purchase them then because there's no way I'm gonna like finish. It's gonna take me a year to knit through the patterns of hers I already have. So, time for that. There are some great team color projects, hats, mitts, scarves, pullovers, koozies, um, done up in team colors in the pigskin party threads. Some of those made it into my queue, and I'm looking forward to knitting those in Broncos and Air Force and Wyoming team colors. Go Pokes! Um, that was nice jazz hands. <laughs> so that is what I'm stocking. As far as acquisitions, yes, I bought yarn I did not need. So I got my Licky needles and I bought some local dyed yarn. It's Andromeda, Andromeda yarn. And again, sold locally at you and me. I love it. And unfortunately, this is a, if you love it, you got to buy it then because you might not see it ever again. So these are both sock yarns, 462 yards, 100 grams, 75 super washed wool, 25% nylon. This is the grumpy locust color. That color is showing up pretty good. It's a bright green with some blue turquoise and some red and brown speckles. And there's like bright turquoise pops in there. It's, I love it. Again, it's Andromeda Sock Yarn. And you can find her at and. Andromeda sock yarn at gmail.com or on Instagram at Andromeda Vintage and Sock Yarn. All one word. Um, love that. So that's Grumpy Locust. This is Once in a Blue Moon. Look how bright that blue is. That's showing up pretty true to color. goes to some navy, and then there's a little flash of green. Oh, working it backwards, if you can see it. But I thought these would work great together. Don't know what in, two color shawl. I don't know, Um, I'm not gonna make socks with them. I think I would rather see them in another accessory project. So I bought those. Then I went back the next week, fell in love with more yarn. So, you and me has started carrying Yarn Rehab from Metacraft Dye Works. This is fingering weight, 100% merino superwash yarn. And I fell in love with these two colorways first. This is kind of caramely, it's beautiful, tonal. This is showing up bluer than it is. It's actually more green, more teal. Mm. I can't get the color to... It's actually more teal. But these look beautiful together, so I was like, oh, let's find an another color for a three-color shawl. So, found some hedgehog fiber sock yarn in silence, and I was like, that looks good. Kind of blah. And 
helpful enablers at the table knitting said, you're right, that is just kind, kind of boring. You should add some red. <laughs> Again, this is yarn rehab. I am not a red person, but I think these look great together. So a three color shawl or a four color shawl because the black really makes it pop. This is sheepish yarn. It's another locally dyed yarn. It's just black in her Nevermore color and it's 75% Cordell, 25% nylon. So um, I like the fact that it's Cordell. I like working with different sheep braids um, and it's still nice and soft. So four color shawl, here I come. Those are my acquisitions. I splurged a lot. I busted my budget for August and September. And I've already spent October's because I may have an order from a loops on the way. But they had fantastical beasts and where to find them colorways. I maybe had to order a few. So those are on the way. Budget Malone. But very happy. Again, these are what not one of a kind, but one chance to purchase. So I did. Okay, so those are my acquisitions. I have done no spinning in the last two weeks, and as far as under the needle, I have done no sewing. Nothing in the garden, not even weed pulling, but I do have something for in the bee yard. I am planning on helping a friend out getting set up with beekeeping and because I have enough equipment I offered um, him a single hive setup to get started and was going to load up the boxes for him and you know, get those transferred so that he can get them painted over the winter if he wants or whatever. So I was pulling frames to transfer the boxes and I found wax moths. It was disgusting. And I will try and include a picture here. It's moving! I don't know how long they've been in there. I thought I had been storing them correctly so they uh, were airtight so nothing could get in. But apparently there was a chink somewhere or a crack or who knows. And the wax moths made it in and the larva is all over and they're... So there is larva and webbing. Ugh, it's just gross all over the frames. So I pulled the frames and put them in my freezer. Not the one in the house. My husband would go crazy. We have a extra freezer in the garage. So I put the frames in there. Two to three days would have done the job that would have been fine killing them off I I have left them in for like a week um ugh, they are so gross so upset for a couple reasons one it's wax moths nobody likes pests and putting frames in your freezer two it's making extra work for me and three to clean up the frames I've got to basically just scrape them all out um which doesn't hurt the frames but I was hoping to try and keep the wax 
sales um, in fairly decent shape. Like they'd all been uncapped for honey extraction, but the cells themselves were still there and could have been repaired by the bees. Um, so now the bees will just have to rebuild all the cells, which will just take more time. So more time wax building and less time making honey. So uh, that's the only reason. Um, again, mostly the gross out factor. And extra, you know, extra work. Now I've got to go through all my equipment and check for wax moths. Yay. Um, off topic. I'm just enjoying knitting along with my cows and the start of the football season. As you can tell, I've already gone off topic and talked about that a lot. <laughs> um, I am participating in the ESPN Fantasy Football again this year. I have drafted two teams and my husband and I are head-to-head -head in one of the leagues. So I'm planning on kicking some butt. Keep your fingers crossed for me. I have been watching Dairyland Knits with Josh. I've just watched the first couple of episodes. So far I'm enjoying it. Again, the, the first couple episodes you're always kind of getting into the groove of things and figuring out how stuff works, what you're going to say. Um, saying um a lot. So he does have about 20, 30 episodes out already. And I started from the beginning. So again, I'm watching his progress, but so far I'm really enjoying it. He's very enthusiastic about fiber and seems like a really nice guy. So that's all for this week. I hope you had a good time. I hope your knitting is going well and that you enjoyed the podcast. I am Danny Girl CO on Inst Instagram and Ravelry, and you can find show notes at www.myhighplaneslife.blogspot.com. They can also be found on Ravelry on the My High Plains Life podcast group thread for this episode. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.